We are the Arcturian Collective. Hello and Namaste. Namaste, Mahalo, Namaste. You have our unconditional love and we thank you for your willingness to co-create with us in this moment of your time. How would you like to interact with us? How may we be of service to you? I would like to ask some questions. Yes, great. And we can start with one and see where we're going. Yes. Uh, when people gasping and uh, cough, yes. is, it, is it possible or easier for other energies to enter the body? Define other energies. Uh, okay, I, I, I can... I can uh, fulfill my sentence because uh, we are releasing energy when we are gasping or, or yes. co- co- <clears throat> coughing. Um, what are that energies that co- coming in? Uh, or are we allowing whatever to go into our bodies? Uh, may it be other uh, dark energies, demons or other creatures? Cre- uh, uh, what are they? Yes. Uh, beings. 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 That are trying to overtake the human body. Is that possible, or you have the, have we would? S- we can explain a little bit like this. You have a a lot of your coughing and yawning is also it has mechanical components simply to keep your carbon oxygen machine that you are incarnated in here running. So generally simply by yawning it can be a release of certain energies but we would say that what you attract of energies is not so much by yawning or coughing that is much more to do with your own frequency and your own belief systems and your own thoughts you are having at this moment so we would say that if you feel really good you feel really aligned you feel very happy you feel very open then if you need to yawn what can happen is actually that you kind of release kind of lower frequency energies Mm -hmm. and because you are in such a high state you will actually in a sense inhale high frequencies also it's a bit with the exercise you did today the moment you if you do it from a good state of being oxygen can really help the system and it can really clear things out so in general it's like a fresh breath a fresh wind coming through Mm -hmm. so in general that uh, shouldn't be a problem now if you cough we could say that sometimes that is also simply to do with mechanical but sometimes coughing can also be a symptom of not saying what you want to say or not expressing yourself in the way that you want to express so coughing can sometimes be a symptom of your throat chakra wanting to express itself but maybe because you are with a person you don't have the courage to do it or you have a belief system in a certain area where you feel you shouldn't and then sometimes people start to cough because they kind of break their own flow because they're kind of in doubt can I flow out what I want to express and then they kind of say no 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 I can't so there's this struggle there Mm, but also there we would say um, simply try to how you stated we would say no that isn't possible that isn't totally true but by having a belief system that you can uh, suck in negative energies when you cough or yawn then what it does is that you are constantly in stress because you do these things pretty often so then you start to guard yourself the whole time and then you actually go down in frequency and that frequency can actually attract a lot of stress and then you can attract or you then attract experiences that reflect that frequency so to go even a step further back even what often you define as negative entities aren't really negative from our perspective what simply happens is that there is synchronicity you are a certain frequency and because of your frequency you're navigating or you're automatically tuning into certain timelines now if there is something in your frequency that needs looking upon that needs integrating 
maybe there's something in your now or in your past that has been a bit dark and then that frequency will always be kind of on and what can happen is that then you attract a certain experience that some of you might deem negative or you might say that's a negative entity but in reality it is actually a being that is of service to you because it's only matching a part of yourself and mm -hmm. by showing up in your external world you become aware of that part and you can suddenly point to it and you can start to work with it more actively so in that way we don't really see that there are any negative beings in the universe because all they do whenever these beings show up in your world mm -hmm. it should really be a sign that there is something that is ready for you to transform to integrate so in that sense, even these negative beings are of service to you because then you can work with that and then you can transform it and you can raise your frequency by integrating those things. So a lot of this has to do with the how you define things and what kind of framework you view the world through. So simply you can have one framework that says, oh, I read... I need to be really careful with breathing, coughing and yawning because otherwise negative negative entities might slip in. That is a very stressful framework. It's a very stressful belief and belief system in that sense. You can also say, I'm always at the right place anyway. I'm part of all that is. I'm always where I need to be. The universe doesn't make mistakes. I cannot be misplaced. A leaf in the wind always drops off the tree when it needs to. It is blown by the wind where it needs to. Now, because of the human mind, you tend to kind of cut yourself out of all that is and kind of make your own linear perspective of how it should be and where you should go and what you should do under pressures of teachers, parents, expectations, partners, whatever. But that linear mind in a sense kind of disallows you to simply be in that flow but on a s more simple matter is how do you know you always need you always are where you need to be you are here and in that sense whatever you meet in your here and now is always what you need to meet and how you want to judge that is up to you of course but by judging something negative it makes it very difficult for you to get a positive meaning out of it and to integrate it. But if you simply have a belief system where you say, I'm always where I need to be, whatever I meet, I can somehow utilize for my own growth, then the world becomes a much nicer place to be in and to navigate through. Does this make sense so far? Yes, very yes. much. Very much sense. <clears throat> yeah, actually answering to another question that I have, you know, okay. maybe I can take that in the same Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How can I heal parallel realities of myself? Uh, do you have some good techniques? You already answered some parts of that because everything around us are in somehow uh, is a reflection and, and is a reminder. M me, what I have done in or yes. do parallel realities that makes me it, that makes it easier for me to heal that what I ha uh, uh, that uh, thing that happened to me. Yes. But is well, in one sense, we would also hear simply by how you use the definitions. We would like to go into that a bit because, in one way, you don't need to heal parallel lives. Because those parallel lives experienced exactly what they needed to experience. The thing is, the moment you put a, I need to heal this, you basically say what happened or what was there in that parallel reality wasn't what it should be. And that isn't true because it was exactly what it should be. Even though you, from your vision and your framework now, might judge it in a way as not optimal. But that is not true. If you can simply see that it was part of all that is and therefore it was perfect, then the need to heal it drops away because then you know I'm perfect here in this here and now as well. So is that making sense? Yeah. 
It's <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. what I'm just seeing, more telling hard. my friend. Yeah, that's myself. very hard to understand. <laughs> yeah, I can understand it, yes. but accept it. But that's now, else. yes. Well, that is. If you like to go into a specific case, we could do that if you feel comfortable with that. But generally, it's your judgment upon things that create the disallowing of it. It creates the resistance. And this may, from our perspective, simply because we understand how, or from our perspective, how we understand the universe to work, is that all is part of all that is. And it can never be outside of all that is so it's always connected everything is always connected to everything and once that really is understood on an experiential level then the need to judge one thing over the other as wrong or good kind of falls away you can still have preference you can still say I prefer to experience this and I do not prefer to experience that but simply keeping it that, it's a preference, not a judgment of this is good, that is wrong. If you simply keep it with your own preference, then there isn't any resistance. Then you simply experience reality as it is. You can say, these experiences I like, these experiences I don't like, and then I will simply choose the experiences I like, so you can explore those paths further. The problem is, the moment you st start saying, this experience I had here, that was wrong, that shouldn't be, what happens then is that you kind of get hooked to it. Mm. And because of that, you keep it in your reality, because something in that frequency was not understood. There is still a lesson for you to learn in that. And that is why you kind of keep it in your reality. And then you might open up a new timeline where you will have the same experience mm. on the same theme but a bit different so you get a new perspective on it. And maybe then you will understand and say, oh, wait a minute, I can simply let this go. And then suddenly you can shift into the other line. Mm. Is this... Yeah, yes? I understand. It's clear. But, uh, yeah, because if you can go into one specific thing yes. that I judge myself and I see that I have the same problem life after life after life many times yes and that's uh, because I'm and yeah, I also have a lot of readings on this on my school yes after school that I'm hooked in some girls in some uh, uh, of some girls uh, after a specific goal you know girls I, I, I'm, I know I'm um, I'm uh, hooked uh, after a specific girl, uh, growth. No, a girl. Yes. Girl. Uh, ah. uh, after a specific girl. Okay, yes. okay. I, I'm hooked on that, and uh, I have been hooked after the same girl in many lifetimes. Yes. And in oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, women. And in and in many lifetimes, yes. I have done very very much bad things with her. I hooked her, kept her uh, in as a prisoner, uh, yes. and uh, and so, uh, and, we, and this happened after life, and life, and life, 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 and with uh, and also with different girls and women, you know. Yes. And uh, I judged myself too hard, so I don't. I'm not able to let go of this. No. You know, and I'm still judging myself. You know. You do understand that, and in, in yes, so, and in some way, I'm a little bit afraid to, 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 uh, to just let go and living in the flow. Yes, and uh, it's like I just I don't trust myself. And it's understandable. And do you? We'll we'll start here and then see how it goes. First of all, do you understand that because you did those things, you experienced how it felt from your perspective? And that often that didn't feel that good. Is that an experiential reality for you? I haven't gone into that uh, feeling. No, yes. because in a sense, the moment you start kind of, and this is this could be in a a partner or in a girl or in a man or a child even. Like the moment you kind of force somebody to do something against their will, you kind of, in a sense, you kind of create karma. But you will notice if you really tap into yourself that the moment you, f you 
that you are forcing somebody else to do something that they don't want to do. So the moment you force somebody to go against their own free will, to go against their own freedom to make their own choices, you will notice that that will actually feel a bit off in your own center as well. Because that other person is part of all that is just like you are. So you trying to dominate another part of yourself will automatically create a disbalance. Now, the only way to understand that is to do it, to gain experiential knowledge with this. So this is a bit, and especially your human planet, where a lot of suffering has been possible, has been in a sense a great playground to experience a lot of these dynamics to experience how it is to suppress somebody, how it is to be suppressed but because of those experiences you actually know what is pleasant and what isn't pleasant so because you had these experiences with this individual you actually learned quite a bit about yourself and you started to learn what was uncomfortable to you what was uncomfortable to them and therefore you kind of explore this theme because you had these experiences you now know that you don't need to go and repeat those things is that clear to you yeah. So understand in a sense, and this might be a bit difficult, especially if you judge that other person, understand that because that other person had those experiences and did those things, co-created them by the way, you can never force something upon another if they're not at some level co-creating it with you. So you shouldn't take all the blame here either. But simply understanding that you chose to experience it from this kind of dominator role because you had that experience you actually learned how to treat people better is that clear to you yes so you could actually thank that person for saying thank you for doing horrible stuff letting my soul collective experience this so I have a better understanding of how to treat myself and other people in a nice way. And this, in a sense, has been her service to you or your service to her. Do understand that on one level there's an equal exchange here. Now, especially if you look at the social programming, a lot of these games that are resolving, for example, around murder, around rape, about abuse, about slavery, a lot of these things you have come in your current moment to a certain understanding of this and from that understanding you say we shouldn't do this. But then negativing it, judging it in a negative way and not being open to connecting to those experiences actually is a bit dangerous because the moment you simply say because we did all these horrible things we now know better so thank you thank you to all parties that were willing to experience this because of all those experiences we have learned and now we are here in that way you can integrate it the moment you say oh i did horrible things in a previous life and i'm ashamed of it in a sense you're keeping it away and that actually increases the chances that you need to open up a new timeline exploring these themes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So I told you that I, I'm going to Akasha school and we do a lot of readings. Yes. Um, for example, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, things that we have uh, experienced. Yes. But but we have never going into this and explained it in this kind of way in a reading. No. That is, it's okay in a way, but we have going inside and healed it a little bit. Yes. But we haven't <clears throat> have this fully understanding in the reading. No. To uh, to tell that it's in a way okay to just. Uh, have a bigger perspective and understand a bit more. Yes. But do you, do you have any um, reading techniques that uh, that we can use? Uh, how to explain 
uh, the other person that you're reading or uh, may, or for myself well in general to, to understand the feel both parts bo- both sides other side both yes. sides at once we can go a bit into this like there are some schools that are really into we only need to experience the light so but from our perspective everything is neutral and this sounds very weird but Every experience you have adds to all that is. So helping an old lady cross the street gives a certain experience and that adds to all that is. Pushing an old lady in front of a truck also adds to all that is and also gives a certain experience. Now obviously having done both, having the experience of both, then it doesn't really make sense to push her under the truck again. But by understanding that that is an option and that on one parallel universe and level that experience has been had somewhere and because of that you simply now choose to do what makes most sense to you but then it it doesn't come from force, it comes from the possibility of both. So often these schools say we need to be only in the light but we would actually say simply be neutral and be open to both the what you might judge the negative thing and the positive thing because then it's way easier to navigate yourself one of your psychologists once said a tree cannot grow up into heaven until its roots reach down into hell so there needs to be this connection between what is it's a bit the eastern world has understood this much better than your western philosophy you cannot have the light without the darkness and Mm. in the light is always a bit of dark and in the dark is always a bit of light and if you only try to focus on the light you are basically getting very unbalanced because it doesn't work that way by understanding that it's a holistic unity that there is what you would call the dark and the light and understand these are only the judgments from a survival based viewpoint as a human being from an other collective these judgments of good and bad don't exist there's only experience and then preference how you want to navigate what you prefer but since you are a group animal and you want to survive on an individual level and you want to survive on a group level then certain behavior is promoted and certain behavior is punished which makes sense from the survival mode of view but that judgment doesn't necessarily need to be there and often that is by judging parts you kind of cut things off from yourself so if you say uh, murder is uh, shouldn't be done then you actually cut off a whole area of experience. Now we're not saying you should murder, obviously, but what you as a collective have done is by exploring murder, you actually came to the understanding that that really isn't a very pleasant way to go. But it's only because of those experiences that it then becomes easier to choose what makes sense to you. But if you deny the negative and the experiences that can be gained there, you kind of become (coughs) unbalanced because it is the contrast and it is these negative experiences that actually inform you so that it is easier to simply choose the right experiences from our perspective. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. So we w- to answer your original question, is there a method? We would basically say try to go into the neutral zone and try not to judge one thing as good and another thing as bad. It has only to do with your survival viewpoint in a sense. There is a saying, what is good for the lion is not good for the zebra. So the moment a zebra is eaten by the lion, that's the worst from the perspective, from the survival instinct from the zebra and it is great for the lion from a higher perspective where it's just energies and experiences you just have the experience of a animal dying and another animal eating and surviving because of that animal dying and then it's much more a flow it's the flow of grass through a zebra through a lion so it's actually a holistic flow instead of all these separated 
things and this should happen and that shouldn't happen. Is this clear and specific enough? Yes. Okay. Is there anything on this theme you would like to go into deeper? Uh, on advice, but we don't have so much time, and, uh, or uh, going further. Uh, do you have some schools that you, you will uh, advise us that maybe uh, is better that we may, may probably never heard about? For what? To, to, to uh, grow faster uh, spiritually. Well, in a sense, <coughs> the channel and we have been working a bit together to, on some level, get out some information through his website. But it's also really follow your own, in that sense, excitement. What are you attracted to? And if you follow that, go online. There's, we would say, if you go online, there's probably 500 different schools you yes. can find in a heartbeat. And you could simply explore a bit. And it's also a bit where you are. Some people really benefit from simply going to the school where you are because the thought that atrocities like murder and genocide actually help all that is in one way, that is simply, it would in a sense fracture their mindset. So it wouldn't really grow their consciousness, it would break them. But once people are advanced far enough, then they can kind of start to balance the light with the darkness. And in a sense, once you see that it's all the same, you can transcend it. So that really is a bit where is a person um, themselves. We can recommend one lecture series called Natural Law from Mark Passio. It is something the channel has laid out. He can send you a link later. That really goes into a lot of these systems and what it really comes down to. In the end, it is really about respecting the free will and freedom to make your own choices and respect that for yourself. So if you're making a choice that maybe other people don't understand, but you're not hurting anybody with it, then understand it's your right to explore that. Another person doesn't have a right to stop you from using your own free will or to use your own freedom to make your own choices. And otherwise, you don't have the right to stop a person that is acting on their free will and their freedom to make their own choices. Obviously, all of this is within integrity, so none of these actions should limit other people in their ability to use their free will and their freedom to make their own choices. But actually, still today on your planet, you have quite a lot of structures that are very fear-based and that actually limit a lot of human freedom. And this lecture series goes quite well into that. And also how to restore this balance, in a sense, of understanding what is good behavior and understanding what is bad behavior. And in that sense, optimizing freedom, both for yourself and other people, because it's in this freedom where people can most quickly accelerate their own consciousness mm -hmm. and their own growth. Yeah, that's very interesting. Because I, I'm going to now, it's a support system in Norway, you know, and where taxes are paying for, for my mother. Yes. And right now I felt that my this person that are helping me in the system, system was forcing me in the wrong di direction. Yes. And so <coughs> now she will seek, you know, seek leave for uh, three, four weeks. Yes. Be because that's why, because she was forcing me, me in my uh, wrong, because I didn't want to go in that direction and she was starting to force me. And I think that's why she was sick now. Because I have my free choice to choose what I want to do. Absolutely. What I don't want to do. And it is on some level damaging to go against that. So the moment you start limiting other people's free will and freedom to make their own choices, you actually limit yourself. Because understanding that these other people are in a sense part of you, they are part of all that is. So in a sense you're holding yourself down by doing that. Or by doing what? 
by limiting others people freedom so the moment you start to limit another person's free will and freedom to make their own choices you actually limit yourself because they are part of all that is just like you are and the moment you start to limit others people's freedom you actually in that sense start to limit your own freedom and you become more and more dense Mm. makes sense So from a health point of view, both physical but also mental, it is very good to always understand that the moment that sometimes you can get irritated by other people and you think, oh, they do something wrong, simply do an inner check. Are they somehow, some way infringing upon the free will of another person? Or are they respecting their own free will and are they respecting the free will of other people? Yes. Are they using their own freedom to make their own choices? Which I might totally have made different choices. But are they using their own freedom to make their own choices? If there's a yes and you still have a problem with it, it's probably something you should go inward and see what you can solve instead of trying to change them. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you can actually heal a lot of these things in yourself, allow other people more freedom. And by transforming that you will suddenly allow yourself to have more freedoms as well. Because often when we feel that we need to limit other people in their behavior, we automatically limit ourselves in our behavior as well. And by limiting ourselves in our behavior, we kind of narrow the field of experience we can play into. A free flow of energy. Uh, do, do you have something to say about the full moon that we are going into now? We enjoy the full moon. Ooh, yes. yeah, yeah, we do. Me too. Enjoy it and okay. connect to it if you like. If you feel that you have, again, we might have said this before, but from our perspective, bodies like the moon, like the sun, like the earth have on a certain level their own consciousness. So you can actually connect to these energies if you are excited about that by simply relaxing, meditating a bit, be out in nature and simply kind of see if you can from your heart maybe send some love to it and then see if something comes back. So if you're excited about that, maybe go out and meditate a bit in nature when there's a full moon and see if you can connect to the moon in a way that's exciting to you. Um, I'm thinking a little bit to learn to practice to channel myself. Yes. Uh, is it uh, some? What do I need to do to be uh, ready? In a sense, simply follow your excitement. Yeah. If your excitement is learning to channel, read books about learning to channel, watch YouTube's about <coughs> learning to channel, mm-hmm. and do exercises about learning to channel. This is something that is available as we read your energy. It wouldn't be your first time to do this, not necessarily in this lifetime, but you have other lifetimes where you were very connected and in a sense are very familiar with the process. So in that sense, it is very available for you if you want to do it. Another general tip we generally give as well is to simply get a hobby that is somehow creative. This can be dancing, drawing, making music, playing an instrument, do a certain sport that you enjoy, but do something active uh, and creative, like coming from your own personal creative force, because that is an area where it's really easy for kind of channeling energies and other parts of yourself to come in and assist you. Do you have any creative outlets that you are momentarily doing or that no. you feel very excited about? No, I don't, I don't know what I'm feeling excited about. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Not yet! <laughs> no. Where are we going to learn, my yeah. friend? Well, if you feel excited about channeling, then simply explore that. Mm. And as you talked with the channel before, um, he can simply give you the exercises as well and simply start practicing. Yeah. And you can talk a bit later with him about it as well, if you like. Yeah. What he did and etc. Then we thank you 
Thank you for so this much. co-creation. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Namaste. Mahalo. Namaste. Namaste. You have our unconditional love. And we're looking forward to connect with you in the next now. Likewise.